So I'm here with uh, Mark, a member of the uh, Ajax APIs team. Could you uh, introduce yourself to the viewers? I'm Mark Lukowski, a member of the Ajax um, API team. We, our team is a small team. We do the search API, the feed API, and the recently launched language API. Cool. So uh, we just came out with this new kind of restish kind of API that I think is a big deal. It really opens up the, the APIs that you've built. Could you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well first just came out with it. what <laughs> we didn't actually just came out with with the API. The API or that protocol has been running for almost two years now. Um, what we did is we documented the protocol and, and we documented you know the same exact protocol that's been powering the search API and, and the feed API and the language API forever. We've just written it down, and we're trying to show people how to use the API in Flash and other non-JavaScript environments, which could include Silverlight, it could include Ruby on Rails, PHP, Java, you know, whatever whatever you as a developer are comfortable with. That's really what we're trying to do. The reason that we document the API just passed, so we want you know proactively tell it's okay to do this. And if you look back at the uh, change in our terms of service back in December, we actually made the terms change, you know, several months ago, and we did that really to bring our search API terms kind of in parity with the feed API, which already allowed, you know, non-JavaScript access. We just wanted to, to make it very clear to everybody that you're not breaking the law by, you know, calling Google in this way. And then what we did just the other day is, is write down the protocol. We documented, you know, the fields, the CGI parameters, the output format, and you know, a whole number of other little things that go along with it. So this is the same thing that, like, uh, I remember, like, Niall Kennedy kind of went through and, like, was watching what the browser was doing it, to reverse engineer it. This is just that. It's actually, it, it is the Niall Kennedy effect, right? Because <laughs> as smart as he is, he did not know the protocol. And we, you know, we look through our logs looking for, okay, what kinds of mistakes do people routinely make? Like, for instance, we tell people to use an API key and we put a placeholder in our samples that say say your key goes here and the most common key failure that we see is an invalid key that says your key goes here we look at uh, these guys that have built you know java or php implementations of the search api on you know niles analysis plus their own analysis and they all do it wrong in, in subtle ways and we said look let's put an end to this let's help these guys solve the problem that they're trying to solve by writing down you know what they're doing and tell them that hey you know you can do this you've got to follow the terms and here's the protocol spec so that you know what that argument really means and that you know that you don't have to pass us this thing called LSTKP and pass it equal to zero it doesn't have any effect and, <laughs> and we're happy to tell you that. Okay cool so what are some of the terms? Well the terms are you know very generic terms that we've had in, in Ajax search for instance you have to show attribution to Google. When you do when you do a search on your site, when you're hosting search results on your site, you have to tell people that it's powered by Google. You know, we want recognition for delivering that content. When you do that, when you put our search results on your page and you say it's powered by Google, it's not cool for you to change the, the data. So it's not okay to present a something that looks like a Google search result for a part for your car and have you change the URL to point to a porn site, for instance. So that's part of our terms. You can't do that sort of, you know, changing of the content. We also don't let you intermix or re-rank the search results. But there, there's so many ways to get the right effect out on, on your site that you shouldn't have to, you know, go down to that level. But the terms are really, you know, the very straightforward, simple terms. Show attribution, don't mess with the data, and this is not a search API that's designed to let you pull data out of Google and stuff it in your database. The purpose of the API is for you to present Google search results to your users in a way that complements your sites and, and uh, you know, meets their expectations of quality. Great. So when uh, some people kind of looked at this at the surface, they remember the SOAP API and they're like, oh, is this just the SOAP API with JSON, but it's actually really different. It's really, it's, it's it has nothing to do with the SOAP API at all. I mean, we, you know, ultimately get our data from the same search back ends, but the Ajax implementation, we, we went a different route. We saw, again, what kind of problems people had with the SOAP API, what kinds of abuse that the API was 
under and how, you know, how can we avoid those sorts of problems going into it. Uh, the, the SOAP API had a number of issues in, in both the terms, well mainly the, the terms, but also some, some quota issues. Uh, the terms were very restrictive and the quota that lets you do a thousand queries a day was essentially a non-starter. I mean, it's, it's hard to call Google search results a, a toy or that they can classify that as a toy API, but it really is an API that is built in a way that you can't use it if you're successful. If you have any aspiration of being successful, that's not the API. It had a thousand query a day limit on it. And, you know, even, you know, I don't know what your Ajaxian page view stats are, but I would imagine you get more than a thousand page views a day. Yeah. You can't use that API on your site, period. So, you know, what's the point of having an API if you can't use it in any kind of modestly successful environment? So our Ajax API comes without limits now. You know, coming without limits means that there's a responsibility on the part of you, the developer, to use it um, and adhere to the terms of service. As long as you're adhering to the terms of service, uh, we think you're okay to run, you know, at speed, you know, and, and we'll contact you if there's an issue you right. know, where you're doing something wrong or stupid or, or you know, abusive. You know, we can contact you for things like that. But it's basically, we, we want to help you succeed. And we're offering you search results to, to help in that area. Great. And these search results aren't just the, you know, kind of web search results. What are the other things that you have it's, access to? It's not just web. It's web, video, news, uh, uh, local search. So you can do mapping search, blogs. You know, basically, if Google has a search uh, property and, and it's relatively reasonable volume, we have an API in front of it. But our system, this, this thing that we launched or documented, isn't just the protocol for search API. It's the protocol to access feeds and the protocol to uh, access language translation you know, in the same Flash and, and non-JavaScript environment. You, you look at that and say, well, why would I ever want to access a feed through you know, Google's API? Why not just go to the feed source? Well, if you bang on a feed source too heavily, they, they'll, they'll shut you down. Come, coming through our system, um, you hit our feed crawler and our feed cache system, so we kind of broker the feed to you and give you the feed in a performant way without you abusing the, the feed provider. So, you know, we are a good choice for, for feeds even on the server. We deliver the data, uh, you know, we'll give you the XML representation of the feed or a process JSON version of the feed. But, you know, we're a legitimate source of feeds. Uh, even for the server side, and then language translation that bring Right. Yeah. And yeah, from the Ajax side, you don't have to do the domain proxy hackery. Exactly. You don't have to do any kind of. You know, if you're in the JavaScript environment already, then you know it's it's a natural to use our API. Not not just for the proxy hackery, but also we process the data. You don't have to know the difference between an RSS <laughs> point. 9.2 feed versus an add of 1.0 feed. For us, we normalize and say, hey, feed has a title, a snippet, and content, and a pub date. You want to go deeper, here's the XML tree for it. Right. So uh, how are people using the, the APIs at the moment? It's, it's all over the map. I mean, we have, you know, big, big customers like uh, Time.com, The New York Times, Entertainment Weekly, People, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Plaxo, we power the Plaxo Pulse system. Uh, so we have these big sites all the way down to the tiny bloggers that have maybe three page views a day. And you know, it's, it's really a broad spectrum. I, I, I can't give you the, big, the number of unique sites, but it's a big, big number. Yeah. And in terms of uh, you know, traffic, I, I think most people associate the Maps API with you know, Google's premier API. But we do more traffic more API operations per day than the Maps API does. And we caught them, you know, our trajectory has been basically straight up since launch. We caught the Maps API in the first year and, and just, you know, continue on past them where they've, you know, flattened to some extent because it's a big, big number. But, you know, we're still on a tear because we have so many offerings. We're not just, you know, pigeonholed into the space of mapping. You know, we right. We do all kinds of search that complements mapping. We do search that complements video sites. We do feeds. 
and with translation, you know, we've opened up a whole new, uh, you know, area of applications that we can help out with. Great. Well, thanks so much for explaining sure. the differences in the new API. Sure.